have a Torah Sendorim. <coughs> and the reason why we do a Torah Sendorim before Rosh Hashanah is because, as the Gemara tells us, based on Psukim, that if one violates <coughs> his Nedorim, mm -hmm. the liability is very serious. So therefore, when you mat the nether, when you know the nether, the process is, if it's done correctly before the panel, it's as if the nether never existed. So it's not, I sin, I didn't do tshuva on a sin. Hatar Sandarm is, when you violated the nether, retroactively, it's as if you never violated the nether. nether. That's, that's, that's the process of Hatar Sandarm. Now, in the text we say before the panel, the two expressions mm -hmm. used, and you have to, and if you don't understand what it means in the panel, who, who say mutalach, 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 they don't understand, it's not a valid process. The two expressions is charoto, charoto means remorse, regret, and there's hatorah. Literally, hatorah means to undo it. Charoto mm -hmm. means a person makes a netter because he's upset at someone. So why did you make the netter? Because you're upset and you're fully aware why you made the netter. Later, when you calm down, you say, I regret that I made the netter. That's harota. What is harota? Meaning, it's not that you weren't aware at the time that you made the netter. What you were saying, but because you were upset, you made the netter. It wasn't that you were lacking any information and because you were lacking the information, mistakenly you made the netter. It wasn't a mistake. Because of my emotional state in my mindset, I want to make the netter. Now that I calm down, I regret what I, what I had said. That's, the, that's harota. Hatorah means that if I would have known something, I would have made the netter. That, it's a mistaken netter, meaning I make a netter, and then I realize because I made the netter, I upset someone. So I say, if I would have known that I would have upset this person, I would have never wanted to make the netter. So that means I wasn't fully aware of all the facts and the ramifications of the netter. That's called Hatorah. Either way, whether it's based on regret or on lack of information, either way, the netter is annulled retroactively. The netter is not a netter. But factually, but the word harota means regret. Hatorah means undoing it, meaning it's because of a lack of information. So the person who says it, when he says it, he has to understand what, what, what he's requesting, requesting. And the panel, when they hear what's being said, they have to understand these two approaches, why the basis for undoing the netter, but either way, the netter is undone retroactively. And not only the netter, also anybody who, let's say his wife, very often, or his daughters are not here, Fatur Sandorim, we could assume, even if they didn't appoint you directly as their agent, that if they would have known, they would have wanted you to be the agent. So you should tell the panel when you're being mounted netter for yourself, not only should they have a mind to annul your net nedorim, but whoever you're representing. So whoever you say that you're representing, their, their nedorim or shvuas, whatever, are also being annulled. Mother also, same thing. Same thing. Anybody, even a stranger, somebody not related to you. Even a kala. Okay? Yusuf Shlir. Yeah. Okay. We left off at 890. We're just finishing up Shara Avo, the gate of love of God. So he says, the Chovos of us writes, V'risi ba'shlomo satoelos, v'yishelo l'cho. He says, I, I see and understand that it should be mostly beneficial completing this chapter or this section by Yishelucho and what will be good for you he says <coughs> I think it is fitting to condense the main themes of this book of mine into ten Hebrew strophes I don't know what strophes are Botim means sections <coughs> And each one of these categories will encompass that particular gate, that particular section. As they're arranged in that specific order. And the reason why he's setting it up in this particular order 
and this classification that one should have a recollection <coughs> of the various parts of the work. That you should, it should be committed to, to memory, to know them by heart. And you should apply it to your heart, to your emotion. And should always be in your cognizance night and day. Based no chachops, and also when you're resting and when you're moving. It should not cease to remember all the issues of this particular work and to remember the fundamentals of every one of these principles that he had presented. That if you're engaging in any activity of service of Hashem, these various classifications will remind you to dedicate exclusively your heart to Hashem. And even if you're distracted with a mundane activity, it will remind you because you will have, have an accountability regarding your neshama. He says, if you're in a troubled state, a person who has, you know, I want to mention the name of uh, <coughs> Rav Orchai Pagromansky. He was the um, post-war, World War II, he was in Paris, and he was the genius of Europe. And he was a Baltruva. When he was 14 years old, he ran a multi-million dollar business, and he came from a very prestigious uh, rabbinic family, but because he was orphaned, he was very religious, and Rabeli Lapian <coughs> had located him, and he said, and he ma- turned him into a Valchuva, sent him to Tells in Europe, and he outpaced even the Rosh Hashivas of Tells, that level of genius he was. And Rabeli Lapian said that it was worthwhile for him to come to this world just to make him a Valchuva, his whole life was worth it. That was worthwhile. This is Rebelli Lapian, Morche Pagramatsky. And Rebelli Lapian was a man at the age of 27 who had Gilo Elio. And he said, after everything said and done, it was worthwhile just for that alone that he should come to existence. That's how special he was. So he says over there, he said, we find that after Hogar was driven from, <coughs> from the house of Avramovino with Yishmoel, it says, she was Toeba Derech. She was lost on the way. So Rashi says, She returned to the idolatry of her father. So he asks, I mean, a person could, be, could go lost. Why going lost? Does that mean to say you, you return to the idolatry of your, of your, of your father? Because her father was, was Paro, was the king of Egypt. So, so Reb Mordechai Pagramatsky said, because a Jew who's attached to God is never lost. Whatever your predicament is, financial, emotional, what, wherever you find yourself, you're never lost because God is always with you. So that, that it says she was lost is an indication that she severed her relationship with Hashem. And therefore, it means she returned to her, the idolatry of her, of her father. <laughs> so over here he's saying, regardless of what your situation is, whether you're involved in worldly activities, whether you're in a troubled state, whatever you are, but if you remember what we had written regarding faith in God, if you have proper faith, you never, you never, you never ruffled, you never troubled, because He's always there and everything has a meaning and has a value and He's always with you. If a person is in a situation where he feels haughty and arrogant, you remember the chapter, the section he'd written, he had written about humility. How a person has to subdue himself and humble himself. If your mind is not occupied, you have to think of all the good that Hashem had done for us and our debt of gratitude and how everything we have to focus and invest it in a proper investment, meaning in service of Hashem. If a person is rejoicing in a physical sense or has physical pleasure, you should remember this section we spoke about abstinence. Weaning yourself from the material to have clarity and not to be become intoxicated with the material. 
If a person is in the state that he feels defiant, and he's defiant of Hashem, you remember the section where you'd spoken about tshuva, how a person has to repent. You know, one of the machinations of the Yitzhahar is <coughs> that a person, when he fails many times, he says, it's too late. It's too late to go back. So a person is defiant, and now finally comes to a point, he feels he has to make amends and correct his way. He says, you know, I've done so much bad, there's no way to go back. There's no such thing. For a Jew, there's no such thing as this. It's never too late. Never. Regardless. So therefore, if you remember what he'd written in the, in the section of tshuva, regardless of your state, you realize there's always a way to come back. A person had ignored his Torah and his belief in God. Remembering the section of Dveikus, attaching yourself, cleaving to God, and how to serve God. If you remember that, you'll know exactly how to come back. To have the exclusivity of God. That it's not sufficient to be half-hearted. It should be fully committed, fully invested in, in God Himself. Regarding your tefillah, your prayer, and the thoughts of your mind. A person feels he has a right to speak his mind. You have to actually, you have to seal, you have to seal your mouth. You have to gird your emotions, your feelings. And you have to take control and dominate your desires. And to take hold of your limbs. And to focus your thoughts. And we have to, this is the introspection here, it's been the personal accountability that we have to evaluate our actions with our understanding. This is the Cheshb and Nefesh, which he had spoken about. And all the other things which I mentioned, the proper disciplines and behaviors, and the exalted disciplines. Remembering all this, regardless of what your state may be, it will put you in good stead and give you the ability to advance. For the Kim Yorenu, Hashem should direct us, Vosho, us and you as Derechat Avodoso, his path of service, Rachma Vuduloso, through his mercy and through his greatness. Amen. Okay? Now, he's on page 892, he has the, the ten classifications. I don't know what, what it means, strophes, the ten strophes. What does strophe mean? Sections. Paragraphs, okay, sections. Elohim aser sabatim. Beis, benig. Yached yichidosch l'tzuroch. This is the unity of God. You should designate yichidosch. Yachedch l'kel echod yitzoroch. Devote your soul solely to your rock. By acknowledging the unity of one God, your Creator. That's Yichud, Shara Yichud. Chakor Udrosh Vizboni Plov. You should delve and you should reflect on his wonders. Vizim Sechel. Vedas Serek Azoroch. And you should understand Vedas Serek, the righteousness. Religious feeling to be, be your support. Yeroi Halokim Hokeel. Fear of God, Vedosov, his testaments, Vchukov, Shmor Load, and his statutes you should keep forever, Vival Timar Ashuroch, so you should never falter. You, you behave properly, you will never falter. Yisamuch Levovoch, Vitomuch, Uvatuch, Bitsur, your heart should be secure and confident in your God, Yebezroch, then Hashem will be to your assistance. Vilev Tor Ase Chukov, the Manoch. This is already, when we serve God, we should do with perfection, with purity of heart. With a pure heart, you should do his statutes for, for his sake. Do not curry favor with your contemporaries, meaning people play up to people. Why do people play up to people? Because you feel that's your sense of insecurity. We need, we need so many people to be on our side because... Hashem's on your side, you need no one, no one on your side. If you do the right thing, 
you don't have to flatter. I mean, that what draws people to flattery, which is which is a negative characteristic, because you're trying to gain their favor, so you're flattering them. But it's, uh, that itself is an expression of a lack of sufficient faith in Hashem. Because if you have trust in Hashem and He's there for you, there's no reason to flatter to play up to anybody. Reiki Soviet Sir offer will offer. Ultimately, the end is we all go back to dust. He hold the gush of the guruch, and we live in a physical earthy setting, the, and knowing that, understanding what our makeup and where we're going, this is the Mishnah Pirkei Ovos, Lona Ta'olech, where we're going to, Waka Ofer, Rim of Toleo, to the dust, to the worms and maggots, that humbles the person. We'll continue. Kaddish.